chapter 19 verses uh, 21 and uh, 22 looking at what we call uh, Paul is love for the churches. Paul is love for the churches. Paul is love for the Says, now after these events, Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and to go to Jerusalem saying after her I have been there I must also see Rome verses 22 having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers Timothy and Erastus he himself stayed in Asia for a while now these are the verses that I want to camp on uh, to expose it and see what is within these particular verses for us to learn and to see how we can apply some of this truth in our day to day living now we remember that in the previous exposition we did we saw the gospel success at Ephesus and uh, one of the things we saw was the disgrace of those that were abusers of the name of Christ in your verses actually 16 of Acts chapter 19 in verse 17 we saw the widespread of the fame and the glory of the name of Christ and in verses 18 we saw the conversion of all those that practiced magic arts and in verses 19 we saw a number of books that were used for magic being burnt before all men and in verses 20 we saw what we call the catacratos which is the increase many individuals come into Christ many disciples many churches planted and the success of the gospel going beyond Ephesus so it is upon those verses that we do have verses 21 the statement have you seen that statement look at the statement again now after these events the ones that we have just gone through very fast after those events Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia okay. so now I want to do this teaching under different subtitles the first one I want to cover is what I have called the plan and the purpose of Paul is definite decision so it has to be very clear to all of us that in this verses 21 Paul makes a serious formal decision and since he was one of the men that were agents of revelation we believe that the Holy Spirit was guiding all his motions and his plan and decision was based on a solid purpose as to what we are going to be seeing first thing we see he plans first of all to go to Macedonia which was actually known also as Thessalonica and that place today is known as Greece and so his second attempt was he said also to go to Corinth and from the studying of uh, ancient history it is believed in Macedonia and in Corinth that's where the earliest churches were planted one in 50 to 51 AD and then another in 55 AD now his third attempt was he also desired to travel 
be what? to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And then the fourth attempt was he also desired to go and see Rome. So now, here is where we need to begin to break down some of these things. The first thing for us to consider is seeing the systematic desire here. By considering the second subheading that I want us to consider, the commissioning of Timothy and Erastus. Now it is here at Ephesus where Timothy and Erastus were sent. The question is why were they sent? The Bible actually gives us a clear reason as to why Paul sent them to go before him. Let us try to use the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 16. Verses 1 and verses 2. So we see that he instructs 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 and verses 2 we see that Paul commissions Timothy and Erastus to go before him to those churches and the reason is here in, the, in verses 16 I mean in, in chapter 16 when he says now concerning the call for the saints as I directed the churches of Galatia so you also are to do on the first day of every week each of you is to put something aside and store it up as it may prosper so that there will be no collection when I come. So the thing that is very clear the apostle actually commissions Timothy and Erastus to go before him to these churches to inform them of his coming and for them to make ready the offering for the saints. In other words, the offering for the poor saints at actually Jerusalem. So, before he comes, he wants them to work not under pressure. Say some should be put aside. Tell them I am coming. But they should do a BCD. Let them make ready of this. Because they are our brothers there. At Jerusalem with some issues. More clarity to this using 2 Corinthians 8. Let us go there very fast. 2 Corinthians 8. The Bible says. Bible watch it. In 2 Corinthians 8. Now we want you to know brothers. Both the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. Verses 2. For in severe test of affliction their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have flowed in wealth of generosity in their part. Look at verses 3. For they gave according to their means as they can testify and beyond their means and of their own accord begging us honestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. So my dear ones, while Paul was at Ephesus, he commissions Timothy and Erastus to go before him to these churches to inform them of his coming and also for them to make ready of their offerings that they were willing to support the 
church in Judea that had some challenges. How do we know that that is also true? Let us also use Romans. Chapter 15. Uh, the verses 25. But then now let me start in verses 24 for the, for the sake of the gospel. The Bible says, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain and to be helped on my journey there by you. Once I have enjoyed your company for a while, now look at verses 25 at present however I am going to Jerusalem see the next word there I'm going to Jerusalem what is it say bringing aid to the saints for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make some contribution to the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. It's what we call Paul's love for the saints. That was Paul. And it's an example to all ministers. Always to make sure that you, you learn from some of these examples. And another thing that I want us to come on to is that still here from, from Ephesus here is where again Paul receives a writing that was coming from the house of Cleo. And Cleo wrote to him. Let's say the house of Cleo wrote to him. Telling him of the division that was happening in the church of Corinth. Now let us go to 1 Corinthians 1.10. My dear ones. I know you now still remember what I told you. That if you want to understand the episodes. You need to have the knowledge of the acts. Things which play there in those letters, it has a foundation, it has a background. So when you see him commissioning, you go to those letters, you see the things there. Okay, in 1 Corinthians 1 10. 1 Corinthians 1 10. It says, Now I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree. Can you use a, one, a language of agree? There's no division. <laughs> <laughs> that, that all of you agree and there be no divisions among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment listen verses 11 it has been reported to me by Cleo's people that there is quarreling among you my brothers he gets all their story while he is actually at Ephesus we have seen the first phase commissioning the guys but again we see many things that he learned about while he was still in Ephesus that were happening in other churches and even the church in Macedonia also had its own issues that Paul did to respond to while he was still at Ephesus you know what, what their challenge was they had told believers at Thessalonica that the Lord had already come so people had given up on work they knew that they were left behind you, have you ever heard that language of left behind <laughs> so they were like you know what the Lord if he has already come back why should we work. So there was a lot of deception there. And so Paul writes to them in the second letter. Looking at 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2. 
Let us look at that one also. It will you. Maybe you are also one of those. Say, what are we still doing here? Things are very hard. Maybe the Lord has already taken his people. No, the Lord is now calling his people. He has not yet come for his people. <laughs> so, but the Bible says, in 2 Thessalonians, uh, chapter 2, this is why as a church, we don't believe in pre-tribulation. Uh, the church is going to, to be snatched away uh, before the Antichrist comes. No. We believe that the church, whoever will be here, they will know the Antichrist. Look at the words here very clear. It says, Now concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together, which we call Episun Agage, the gathering together of believers. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him we ask you brothers look at the verses too do not be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Verse 3. Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless rebellion comes first. That is the Antichrist. He has to first appear first. Then we can begin to think about the Lord being around the corner. He says let no one deceive you in any way for that day will not come. Which day is he talking about? The day of the coming of what? Of the Lord. He says don't be deceived about it unless the rebellion comes first and a man of lawlessness is revealed. So the thing that is very common in the church today, the, the thing that is to do with that uh, pre-tribulation. We don't see it in the scriptures. It is just to soften people's lives. We are going to just disappear. We we'll leave you behind. What would be the use of the perseverance of the saints? Because the believers will be here. But they will overcome him by not taking the number. They will allow to die. And those that are not his, say, Don't waste your time, my friend. Give me the number. Don't waste your time. Give me the number. <laughs> But the true believers will be here will endure to the very end and they will not take the number. The Lord will actually will give them that perseverance and so they will overcome him by shedding their blood. So all these teachings we have done they are on YouTube. Make use of them. I don't want to lose what I'm communicating. I know Ron was beginning to smile but I'm not going there. <laughs> so the thing is, Paul is love for the churches is not only seen in his care for the poor saints but also in their spiritual welfare. He cared less about his comfort but the well-being of the churches. This is who Paul was. But you, have you heard of people, uh, churches which have uh, sister churches? Even the list which is there, they say you bring it to the headquarter. Bring it to the headquarter. This is not Paul. This is not, that, that is not how things were done in the scriptures. But another thing for us to consider in the text is look at the man that he sends alongside Erastus. The Bible speaks 
speaks of Timothy who was a most excellent to him of all a most faithful a most dear one a most fit companion of Paul but much as he loved this young man his love for that church is seen in Paul actually said in the man he loves among all see how he writes to the Corinthians when he said in Timothy 1 Corinthians chapter 4 let us just consider verses 10 and see some sufferings of the apostles and compare with the apostles of today <laughs> in a good faith <laughs> let us just consider verses 10 we are fools for Christ we are fools for Christ's sake but you are wise in Christ we are weak but you are strong you are held in honor but we in this repute 11 to the present hour we hunger we thirst we are poorly dressed buffeted homeless and we labor working with our own hands we are reviled yet we bless when persecuted we endure when slandered we entreat we have become and are still like the scum of the world and the refuse of all things. Look at 14. I do not ready things to make you ashamed but to admonish you as my beloved children. Don't forget that it will help you to understand the love that Paul has for the churches. Yes, Timothy is very dear to him but the love he had for the churches was even beyond the one he had for Timothy but for you to understand how much Paul loved the churches he gives to the church a person to go and minister to them the one that was a beloved of his a man that was a fit companion faithful as compared to all other companions of Paul. And in 15 he says, For though you have countless gates in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I have become your father in Christ through the gospel. And I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved. My beloved and my faithful child in the Lord to remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. The man actually gave to the church his beloved to minister to them. He knew he was the best. Look at verses 18 and arrogant as though I were not coming to you but I'll come to you if the Lord wills and I'll find out the talk of these arrogant people but their power also that yes there were people there who were slandering him and saying something that were unfit but let Timothy first go and help them understand his ways and I think I want you to understand here that even when it came to the churches Paul never sent a person that he didn't have complete trust in to help the believers he actually says 
Timothy has to go there. Remember we have seen Erastus and Timothy but the naming of Timothy first brings the greater emphasis on to why actually we have to realize the love that Paul had for, for, for this church. And what is very amazing is this. Paul himself makes actually a very outstanding request of kindness to the Corinthians telling them this. Look at chapter 16. The verses 10 and 11. First Corinthians 16 verses 10 and 11. One thing you realize here is this. When Timothy comes, see that you put him at ease among you. The apostle made a request for a kind treatment of Timothy while at Corinth. He loves the believers at Corinth. But he loves also Timothy. And he says, Because I love you guys, is why I give you the one I love. But since they are sending the beloved to a divided church, remember this church has these categories. Some people follow who? <laughs> Some people follow who? So they have a lot of their people there. So now Timothy is coming from a camp of Paul. The Corinthians would treat you according to the camp you are coming from. So he says to them that even as he comes to you, see to it that you put him at ease among you. For so he is doing the Lord's work. And uh, so, uh, like me, so he protects the junior minister. Verses 11 by saying, so let no one despise him. Let him on his way in peace. That he may return to me. For I am expecting him. With the brothers. Timothy was not permanently given to the Corinthians. <laughs> Timothy is a beloved of who? <laughs> Paul. <laughs> of Paul. <laughs> he cannot just allow him like that. <laughs> he sends him only <laughs> for the purpose of benefiting the church in Paul's absence. <laughs> but he wants him he wants him to be with him. Doesn't want him very far. Say as he goes there, make sure that you see him well on his way as he gets back to me. And uh, since Timothy was known to delay there, Paul later on sent also Titus to continue from where Timothy had finished. When you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6. But I also want us to camp a little bit on Elrasta Erastus' first appearance is Acts chapter 19 and verses 22 but he has several appearances somewhere also in Romans 16 23 appears and also in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and the verse is actually uh, 20 but now here I also want us to discuss another thing in a few minutes we are left with what was the main reason of police delay in actually Ephesus what is that thing that held him back and for us to fully understand it still we need to look at the biblical text why was the apostle saying guys go before me but I must stay for a, 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 a little while here in Asia what was the main thing that was compelling him to do, to do that and let us go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Still where we are there. 
chapter 16 beginning with verses 5 everything is there the Bible says I will visit you after passing through Macedonia have you heard that go back to our order you remember our order in the book of Acts he commissioned Timothy and the Rastas first of all to go to Macedonia and so here we see he says to the Corinthians I'll visit you after passing through Macedonia I intend to pass through Macedonia and perhaps I will stay with you or even spend winter so that you may help me on my journey wherever I go look at verse 7 for I do not want to see you now just in passing I hope to spend some time with you if the Lord permits but the reason for that delay is, is in verses 8 but I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost it's the reason as to why the gentleman was saying the other guys had to go before him because he was waiting for a special event and the thing is it had to find him in Ephesus and another thing that we also need to understand Paul himself being the guardian of the gospel listen listen he could not leave Ephesus without the presence of one of his faithful helpers. He could not. Several things happened when actually Timothy and Erastus had left. And because Paul knew that a lot was happening, not just the Corinthians wanted him to come. He could not come. Look at the guardian of the gospel, my dear ones. By going to 1 Timothy 1. Because something here needs to be put into its rightful order. My dear ones, popularly, ministers whenever they get an opportunity to preach out they leave their pulpits to whoever doesn't know what to communicate they may never even pick from their very own congregation they look for a pastor friend somewhere say pastor so and so will come and bless you in my absence that wasn't Paul Paul had invested much time here two years and plus months could not just leave Ephesus in the hands of no one so he makes sure that the time that was invested in the, in the, in the believers at Ephesus is never wasted and even us if you have invested in particular individuals in your absence you leave them with an individual that is not going to compromise the time that you've devoted in them. Look at First Timothy. One three. Look at it. This is a minister that is supposed to minister here at Ephesus. And here are the words of the apostle. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia they had to go before him but they were known to stay there forever they had to come back Timothy is chosen to be the pastor in Ephesus so as he is out there he should come back on time because time will arrive for Paulus 
also to go. But he cannot go when his faithful companion is not there, the one that he knows that will not compromise. So he says, as I argued you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus. Don't know what was the delay on the side of Timothy. But the apostle being the guardian of the gospel and the time he had invested in these guys, he says, I told you to remain there. So that you may charge certain persons, you may charge certain persons, in other words, command them, rebuke them not to teach any different doctrine. My dear ones, doctrine is very important to the church. We should not compromise about doctrine. When you hear people say that I can fellowship wherever I want, indeed those people are babies. You have to just forgive them. A true believer has to be picky. He doesn't just join any fellowship because these are also believers. Let me just go there. What are they teaching? What is that thing that they, they, have, they have been built on? And so with the work that Paul had done in Ephesus, he realized after these guys had gone that there were some things he was hearing there that were different things. So he wants Timothy here. Why does he want him here? To defend that, uh, the, the doctrine that Paul had actually taught these individuals. Says no any person. And the one that was next to Timothy that was also beloved of, of, of Paul. See how he also raised to him. In Titus 2.1. Titus 2 1. He says to him, But as for you, these are pastoral episodes. But what is very challenging, pastors don't read these episodes. <laughs> You're making it an episode, but pastors don't read <laughs> So, the thing is, whoever wants to be in ministry, those ones who have are, who are, who are, who are even already gone into ministry, and they stand behind the thing here, this is the throne of the word. This pulpit here. It is the throne of the word. There is no word here. You have to just leave it. And sit down. <laughs> if it is a swimming pool. Are you listening? We are to dive straight into the word of God. A swimming person dives into water. We dive completely. Don't remain on the springboard where you begin to live from to, to, to jump into the, the, the swimming pool. We are here. I'm coming. I'm coming. Many preachers are just on the board. Dive into the word. Because everything people need to understand is within the word. So he says to Titus, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. That's the church. Church is defined by sound doctrine. And if it is not sound doctrine, it is dog food. And dog food is unfit for human consumption. <laughs> That's one the thing. Let us finalize. We have also seen in our Acts chapter 19, Paul saying, I must also see Rome. Now, Rome. Roma was the capital of, Rome, the, of the Roman Empire. And Paul desired to go there to win some people also for Christ. Remember what we have said in all other teachings. The elect of the Lord are scattered. Look at Romans 1.6. 
It says in Romans 1.6 Including you Have you seen that word? Have you seen that word? It says including what? You Who are called to belong to what? The elect of the Lord are scattered and uh, the theme for us also to see is us also looking at uh, this verses uh, uh, 13 look at your verse 13 I want you to know brothers that I have often intended to come to you but, uh, but thus far have been prevented in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. My dear ones, the thing is, Paul and his desire of wanting to go there he wanted also among the Romans to reap some harvest for Christ and look at verses 14 which speaks to all of us all believers are under obligation that's why in 1 Corinthians 9 Paul says woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel Look at that verse 14. For I am under obligation both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. The, the barbarians are, are also known as the foolish ones. <laughs> the Bible says both to the wise and the foolish. He has explained. I don't know if you've understood it. He has just explained. Greeks are wise. But barbarians were fools. <laughs> have, you seen, have you understood? Greeks were wise. Barbarians were fools. You remember when Paul was in Athens? What did the Epicureans and the Stoics say to him? They said, What is this barbarian saying? What is this babbler saying? They didn't just say it in full, they said, What is this babbler saying? I'm not meaning Barbara as a name. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? But they were actually saying the foolish one. What is this foolish one saying to us? And so the Bible says the man was under obligation to actually go out to all of these. That's why when we are preaching the gospel, whether someone is a Muslim, we preach to him. If he's a Catholic, we preach to him. If he belongs to any tribe, we preach to him. For we do not know who the elect of the Lord are. You'll never find an individual having actually an E stamp on his forehead. I'm an elect. Have you seen the E stamp? So, we are just like people mining. You believe the oil is there. So you continue to mine and mine and mine. You drill and drill and drill as you go deeper, as you go deeper. And if the oil is there, will be you will be found. So the message has to go to all men without separating. Both the Jews and the Gentiles. But remember one thing. In conclusion, why does he desire to go to a place where the, the Jews were not allowed to go? Remember what we saw earlier. Go to Acts chapter 18. Verses 1 and verses 2. Acts 18. Man, I, I, I just pray that you just remember these things. Everything we are building on to has, we have already actually laid a foundation to it. Remember, it says, after this, Paul left Athens and he went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila. A native of Pontus. 
recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had commanded all Jews to leave Rome. But Paul is saying here I must go I must go to Rome. The truth about this is this. It is believed that while Paul was at Ephesus this emperor that was denying the Jews from living in actually Rome actually later died. So after Paul had received the news he was actually willing to go there. And then another thing is this that we shall see in the upcoming exposition is that Paul himself was a Roman citizen. So no one could deny him to go there. And the thing that we, also, we have also seen he desired first to go to Jerusalem and then go to Rome. But little did he know that that, meet, uh, that visitation was making to Jerusalem was going to be the last one. So God willing we shall finish the, next, the rest of the verses next week and learn other important things there that happened at Ephesus. But for now, let us appreciate the Lord for the days. Father in the name of our Lord. 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 Father in the name of our Lord.